a woman has gone viral because she has a PhD and she took an IQ test next to some guy that she thought was just a dumb rube hillbilly. And the dumb rube hillbilly did better on the IQ test than she did. I'm 21, I'm a high school graduate, and I work in the Marine Corps. I'm 30 years old, I have my PhD in cancer biology, and I work in a biotech industry. Grad school, I went to University of South Carolina, and undergrad, I went to University of Florida. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two, me, I don't know. PhD, <laughs> cancer biology scientist, I work in a biotech company, we make COVID-19 testing kits, oh, stuff like that. Cool. Then six. It has nothing to do with your background. I don't think you really have the highest EQ out of all of us. Tyler, he ranked last for me personally because the way he carries himself, he was ranking intelligence based on his point of view and not taking in <laughs> other people's point of views. So number one is Raymond. Number two would be Kaylee. Number three will be Tyler. And number four would be Shada. Number five is Sean. And number six is Maria. <laughs> So the guy, the big, dumb, rude idiot guy who only has a high school education, he has a much higher IQ than the gal who has all these degrees and she's a cancer researcher or whatever. I am not surprised by this. One of the biggest downsides to university expansion and to credentialism is that it convinces people that they're much smarter than they are. Uh, one of the big problems that has happened at the universities is that social engineers and political activists took over in the 1960s and 70s and insisted in the name of what we would now call inclusion, equity, and, and diversity, that we had to lower the standards at all of the universities. And people of all backgrounds, all racial backgrounds, geographical backgrounds, many argued that this was a bad idea, is you were going to destroy education for everyone and for some kids, they weren't even going to be able to meet the new lower standards and they were going to flunk out and there was going to be a mismatch there. But there's, an, there's another downside to this, which is that as, as college and university admissions skyrocketed and all of a sudden, I think it was right around the time that I graduated high school, something like 70% of high school graduates went to college, an all-time high. It's actually gone down since then. One of the downsides to that is you were going to persuade people without any basis that they are much smarter than they are. Whereas that kid with the high school degree and nothing else, he, he doesn't labor under any of those delusions. He has a good dose of humility and he, he's probably right, actually. It's not just that he underestimated his intelligence. It's that he's probably right. Most of us are not that intelligent. We don't, you know, I, I read books for a living in large part and I still know basically nothing. <laughs> My education is still relatively pretty derelict by many historical standards. But the problem is if you have the PhD and you've got the, all these fancy accolades and for, for however you were able to acquire them, you just think you're so much smarter than you are. And that kind of hubris, that pride will blind you and it will make you look dumber than the dumbest person you ever met on the street. Right now, go to preborn.com slash Knowles, K-N-O-W-L-E-S. Yesterday, I got to catch up with my good friends from Preborn. They came to the offices. I love their mission. They're great. I know you do as well. That is why I'm really, really thrilled to partner with them on this show. What does Preborn do? They help mothers and their children in crisis. Preborn is reaching into the hearts of women by allowing them to hear the hearts of their babies and introducing them to their precious little lives. This connection, just hearing the ultrasound, doubles a baby's chance at life. Every day, Preborn's network of clinics rescues 200 babies' lives. We all talk about how important it is to protect life and to stop abortion. They do it every day. 200 babies a day live rather than be murdered because of Preborn. And you can help too. Your gift of $28 for a free ultrasound goes directly to women in need, and Preborn doesn't take any of that money. They independently fundraise for their team and their administrative costs, so every cent that you give goes directly to the mothers to saving babies' lives. I think it's great. All gifts are tax deductible, especially, you know, the end of the year comes, and you don't know where to give. You want to give, but you don't know. These guys are absolutely impeccable. You know your dollars are going the distance. Dial pound 250, say keyword baby. That's pound 250, 
keyword baby, or you can donate securely at preborn.com slash Knowles, K-N-W-L-E-S, preborn.com slash Knowles. Five Republican Florida state legislators have just switched from endorsing Ron DeSantis to endorsing Donald Trump. Uh, Trump, this is a few days ago, Trump gained seven endorsements from state legislators. Uh, This was the same day he gave a speech at the Florida Freedom Summit. So two people who had not yet endorsed, endorsed Trump, and then five flipped. The ones who flipped were our state reps, Jessica Baker, Webster Barnaby, Alina Garcia, Kevin Steele, and State Senator Debbie Mayfield. Now, on the other side of that news cycle, the governor of Iowa, Kim Reynolds, just endorsed Ron DeSantis. So where does that leave the race? I think, don't shoot the messenger, you know I love Ron DeSantis. Uh, I think this is just yet another sign. The momentum is with Trump here. Trump unveils these endorsements. Why would someone who had previously endorsed one candidate switch? The reason that they would do that is because they believe, maybe they had a genuine change of heart, or more likely, they realized that the guy they backed is not going to win. And so they can, they can still get on the team that appears more likely to win. And maybe they'll be able to receive some political favor as a result of that. And maybe this will help with their reelection campaigns. So they could get some kind of appointment. That's what they're after. Now, shortly after that announcement, DeSantis formally uh, announces that he's got the endorsement of the governor of Iowa. Uh, Good for him. Maybe that'll swing some votes. Trump is still way up in Iowa, um, uh, in the polls and among committed Iowa caucus goers. So I don't know that it it moves a whole lot. Even if it does, Iowa hasn't predicted the Republican nominee for president since George W. Bush. But in 08, 12, 16... It hasn't. So I'm not sure that that's particularly uh, persuasive now. And furthermore, I I think DeSantis had to pull the trigger on the the Kim Reynolds endorsement, which has been rumored for weeks now, because Nikki Haley is tied with DeSantis in Iowa. So even, you know, the DeSantis campaign moves its people to Iowa to say, this is going to be our big stand, and this is where we're going to take the momentum away from Trump. But even there, Nikki Haley has come up, and she's rivaling DeSantis for the number two spot. So I think DeSantis, in a way, had to make the, the Reynolds announcement less to hurt Trump's momentum and more to hurt Haley's momentum over there. Why is all this happening though? Why hasn't? Especially if you're someone who loves Ron DeSantis and you're backing his campaign or you love uh, Nikki Haley or any of the other candidates. Why is it the case that Trump keeps doing so well? I think there are a lot of reasons for that. But even in this present news cycle, I think the war in the Middle East helps Trump. And the war in the Middle East helps Trump because Trump, unexpectedly to most, brought peace to the Middle East. Trump had the best Middle East policy of any president in my entire lifetime. Maybe the best Middle East policy of any president, probably better than Reagan's. Maybe better, I don't know. I don't even know how far back we would go into the 20th century. He had a great Middle East policy. The Abraham Accords were a major victory. The fact that he destroyed ISIS, first of all, then, uh, basically seemed like a dove and didn't want to go and launch new wars in the Middle East, but then would occasionally drop the Moab or would occasionally assassinate an Iranian general. And so that unpredictability had people playing real, real polite. That's why people are looking and they're saying, man, Donald Trump, who we were told was crazy and wild and a cowboy, he had peace in the Middle East when he was president. Joe Biden, who we told was a return to normal, brought us war in the Middle East, which sadly is normal, I guess. It was the same arguments with Reagan. Reagan's a cowboy. He's going to start World War III. And then what happens? He was a major peace president whose presidency helped bring about the end of the Cold War. Boy, what a great clip that was. Now, hey, 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 man. Ring that bell. Subscribe to the Michael Knowles YouTube channel. We'll see you next time.